Okay, I'll be back. Sit down, we want to talk to you real quick. Can we talk to you real quick? Hi, actually, I am heading out. But um, right now is a real moment that our people need in order for us to be able to talk about what's really happening. We need a Build Back Better plan right now. We, we knocked on the door first. We need solutions in the Build Back Better plan. We have the solutions that we need. We knocked on doors for you to get you elected. And just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. So what you're seeing there is the beginning of an encounter that uh, unfortunate Senator uh, Kirsten Sinema had at a ASU, uh, where she's a lecturer at the School for Social Work. I just love that of all of the <laughs> things she could be teaching, it's social work. <laughs> You know, feeling some sort of obligation to right social wrongs and things like that. Anyway, people who actually care about that include uh, Lucha Arizona and uh, members of that group um, were waiting for her when she came out of her classroom. She immediately booked it for a bathroom and uh, they followed her in to uh, talk about some of the things they think she is blocking, including immigration reform, a number of other topics. And um, so Viviana, what, what do you think about this? They She apparently didn't just go back to Arizona for fundraisers and glasses of champagne and hikes and things like that. She was also teaching and they were waiting for her. Yeah, I'm with you on the teaching. It's like, what is she teaching now? Uh, yeah, I, I she continually is like the character from SNL we've all been waiting for. Like she really is a real person, but she looks like a caricature of herself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. I'm I'm not surprised that people are upset. I'm not surprised that they are coming after her. I'm one of those people that are upset with her. I, I don't understand how she got into office. And here she is. And it's uh, actually very dangerous to have somebody like her in any position of power. Um, but I'm yeah. glad that people are, are taking a stand. I'm glad that people are speaking up and speaking their mind. So, uh, you know, it's it's been a, a tough, pill to swallow every single time she talks. Yeah, yeah, and I would say, look, there's a lot of different battles that have to happen simultaneously. Um, the most important ones are substantive about the bills that she's blocking, um, which are all of them basically, uh, both individually, like with the reconciliation bill. And in a larger sense, since she's standing against reform to the filibuster, she's fine with literally nothing passing the Senate, uh, which mm -hmm. sucks, but also, if she is going to be in office, and up until when we can finally kick her out, uh, maybe this is a minor note. You do not get to have this aura of being the cool <laughs> senator because you happen to be young or because you did a, a triathlon or something. Uh, George <laughs> Bush likes to ride bikes. He killed like a million Iraqis. I don't give it. I've almost said it. Whew, okay, I don't care about your hobbies, I don't care about your wigs. I don't care about how much you love Rose. You are Joe Manchin, you're Marsha Blackburn. You're all of those people that are standing between people who are suffering and the help that they need. I don't care if you once ran far. But anyway, um, there is a debate about this particular protest, so we're gonna get into it. First, we're gonna allow the organization Lucha Arizona to respond. They said, we wouldn't have to resort to confronting Senator Cinema around Phoenix if she took meetings with the communities that elected her. She's been completely inaccessible, we're sick of the political games. Stop playing with our lives, build back better, back the bill. And so, yeah, she doesn't do that. She no. doesn't do meetings with her constituents, she doesn't answer questions. She is completely closed off, except to her donors, she does meet with them. So. Yes, if they have to go to a school, if they have to go to the bathroom, that is their argument for it. What do you think about the particular venue? The fact that they, especially people are have a problem with the fact that they went into the bathroom with her. What do you think about that? Well, she is full of some of those place to find her. I'll block myself out. She's full of it. <laughs> so that's where you gotta go, where she's letting it loose. I don't know. Um, she has said that she doesn't wanna meet with people. You know, she's in the social work school, but she doesn't want to meet meet with yeah. society. She doesn't want to meet with the people. She only wants to hear people who can line her pockets. And this is the problem with politics that everyone has on the left and the right. This is what the right accuses the left of, of this elitism and all of this stuff. This is what the left accuses the right of. And then this is people like yeah. Cinema and Manchin are right there, smack in the middle, playing both sides. And doing a great job of it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what she has accomplished other than get a lot of press. Yeah, well, I mean, I think she, yes, for her personally, in terms of actual effect on our politics, 
Um, she wasn't really sent there to do things. She was sent there to stop things from being done. Remember, it's not like, and I'm saying remember to people who might not be as familiar with politics, you don't need to learn any of these lessons. But it's not like you have hundreds of millions of people who are desperate that have been left behind and you have uh, wealthy interests, and both of them have been dropped on an island to set up a new government. Which one's gonna <laughs> win? It's already set up for those people. They don't need to play offense, they just need defense. Defense is their offense, and I find it offensive, actually. <laughs> so anyway, let's talk now a little bit more about um, the going into the bathroom. So you had some people who argued against it on social media as strategically undercutting their message. People who I respect, like um, Josie Duffy Rice, who wrote, imagine the best headline ever. Cinema hides in bathroom for six hours to avoid protesters is startled to find they are still there. That's very funny. You also had people who were more aggressively against it, like how dare these animal leftists <laughs> saying that it's sexist because she's a woman, even though I believe the people who went in um, were women, or at least the vast majority uh, were. Or people trying to flip it, saying, how would you feel if crazed right wingers followed AOC into a bathroom? And that is the sort of thing that it masquerades as adding intellectual consistency and context, but very much is not. I would ask, what are they following her to the bathroom for? If it's Ben Shapiro because he desperately wants to debate her, it's hardly the same thing. They followed Cinema in because she literally will not answer questions anywhere. And she is standing against aid in a massive variety of different forms. They came with substantive concerns. They didn't threaten her or anything like that. They said, these are the things that matter to us. I don't see right wing protests against AOC taking that form. So let's just bear that in mind. But anyway, what, what do you think? I, I'm not one to go into the bathroom. I think standing outside of the bathroom door would have been sufficient. Okay. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't blame them. And they are her constituents. She's there to speak to students. She's not speaking to students except for on, you know, on the dais, and that's it. That you need a forum where there's a back and forth. You need to respond yeah. to these questions. You need to respond to your constituents. And I don't think that she should be surprised that they're cornering her. Now, personally, would I go into the bathroom? I don't like that. Personally, I don't think that's the right choice. Do I think it's illegal? Is it wrong? You know, uh, to me, it's not the best way to get your message across. But mm -hmm. she, her message is, I don't care what you have to say. Yeah, yeah. She's just walking past and pushing past them. So you know, they got it on camera. We know she heard that. We know she's hearing this. So at least it was said. At least we have it, you that's know, true. documented at this point, which we hadn't that's had true. before. You know, I'm gonna give my take, but before I give my take, let's go to the end of the interaction after she had left the bathroom and she did wash her hands. People were asking in the chat. <laughs> she then flees to a different location. You'll see that in this little clip. Come on. Will you support the Build Back Better plan so that we can have justice and, and solutions that we need for immigration, labor, Okay, that's it. She just went into that room. She's not answering questions because she doesn't feel like she answers to those people because she doesn't answer to those people. Some of them were actual volunteers for her campaign. They won't be the next time. Yeah. People are starting to learn who she is, and that's an important thing that we can contribute to. But yeah. she doesn't give a damn about any of those people. That is that is very clear. Now, right. my my take on the bathroom thing is, if if people with the right substantive positions, whether it's Josie Duffy Rice or people are online or Viviana or whatever, want to debate tactics and optics, let's have it. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, if you stand with Curse and Cinema and you don't want the bill to exist, or if it does exist, you want it to be as small as possible, and you start talking about um, things that are unfair, or should we really be doing this or whatever? Screw you, honestly. Like if you stand with the people in the status quo who are already lording it over all of us, and your fundamental concern is making sure that nothing happens to that status quo that you love so much, I don't want to hear about how comfortable senators are and how we have to maintain that. 
And I have a little bit more to say that. I do wanna give credit to Andrew Lawrence on Twitter said, it seems like the people whose lives won't change either way think heckling cinema is bad. And the people yeah. whose lives would change for the better think heckling cinema is good, exactly. And it's been said a million times before, I will say it one more time. Protest that's only acceptable until it makes powerful people uncomfortable yeah. ain't protest that's gonna matter. And think about that, like we're not supposed to make her briefly uncomfortable. How comfortable do you think the people are like in that group who've had families um, that have been deported uh, because we haven't had immigration reform and she's standing against it. Um, the people who could have made $15 an hour and are not now, how comfortable are they with their salaries? People who are you know, burdened by uh, student loan debt, people who desperately need elder care, people who've been sent out of their houses who need COVID aid, all of these things. Why should they be more uncomfortable than their servant? I think that's a much more important question to ask then. Is it really fair? Come on, she's trying to teach. Anyway, those are my thoughts. John, you knocked it out of the park. That is a thousand percent on the mark. They need to be uncomfortable. And like I said, personally, would I go into the bathroom? No, but I think when you are a leader- And I wouldn't follow you there, that's my pledge. <laughs> Good, but if you're a leader, you gotta expect that people are gonna make you uncomfortable. You're gonna expect to be heckled, you're gonna expect to get a shoe thrown at you. I mean, things are gonna happen because you need to answer to these people. And I really don't mind if you're uncomfortable. Personally, I wouldn't do it to you. They didn't hurt her, they didn't attack her, they didn't call her any names. They were speaking to her as calmly as they could. She was completely ignoring them, that's on her. She could have yeah. stopped, you know what? I'll speak to you as soon as I get out of the restroom. Yeah. She was that's totally true. disrespectful to her own people. She didn't even she, pretend. Barbara Feinstein pretends better with her constituents. <laughs> she patted them on the head. Cinema. Yeah, you don't know yeah. what you're talking about. She could have at least said, <laughs> exactly. I mean, look, Feinstein might not remember the interaction 20 oh, minutes later, let's but not go there. Okay, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 90 year old senators Diane need Feinstein. to yeah, yeah. need to retire. Anyway, um, what did I say? Barbara. That's all right. Oh, I was thinking of Barbara Boxer. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, Barbara Diane Boxer. Feinstein. Well, she can't remember the name of the Green New Deal. Why should I remember her name? For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.